Richard Allen Baldwin was born on June 11, 1955 from Corpus Christi, Texas. His father, Jim Baldwin, owned his own roofing company, and he was also a racer. Jim taught his son, Rick, a trick of the trades as a roofer and a race car driver. In 1971, Jim and Rick went down to New Mexico for the 1971 Baja 1000. Rick was on standby for spare parts while Jim entered the race. In 1972, Rick Baldwin finally started his own racing career and frequently raced at Corpus Christi Speedway, which is an old dirt track and raced at Riverside Raceway alongside with his dad. After nearly a decade of racing, Rick Baldwin finally made his NASCAR debut at the 1981 Texas World Speedway race for Price Racing, which was owned by D.K. Ulrich. Baldwin started 29th and finished 21st after his Oldsmobile had engine issues. He ran 149 laps on track. Throughout his NASCAR career, he did a few races between 1981 and 1986. He only did one day total 500, which was in 1983. He raced his way into the Great American Race with a 15th place finish. In the 500, Rick Baldwin started 30th and finished in 20th place, despite being a three-car crash with Ronnie Hopkins and Jaden McDuffie on lap 145. In 11 starts, Rick's average finish was a 25.5. After the 1986 double race, there were no other plans for the Texas driver. Trouble in turn one. That's Buddy Erickson's car from Martinsville, Virginia. The pirouettes to a stop out in turn one. Erickson spins the wheel, gets it going again. Gets up on the racetrack. And, oh, Morgan Shepard piles into Erickson. Harry Gant's car just obliterates the left side of Erickson's machine. It looked like Jeff Bodine may have gotten a piece of that as well. Morgan Shepard went by. And the Mangle race still far with Buick. Now Morgan Shepard sits on the outside of the track. Heavy damage on that car. Both the front and rear end are shoved in. Earnhardt pulls up alongside Tim Richmond, but I'm sure both know that with three cars littering turn one, it'll be nearly impossible to get this race back to green. Here's Buddy Eagle's car spinning on the grass. Aaron takes the car refired, pulls it back, tries to get back up on the track apron. The car seems to stall a little bit. Now it digs up. Shepard contact spins Erickson around down on the lower side and Gant right in the driver's door. Heavy damage. Those three cars mangled and it turned one. All three drivers are still in the cars as safety crews are being rushed to the scene. After Buddy Erickson suffered a head injury and a broken leg, Rick Baldwin became a replacement driver for Buddy for the 1986 Miller American 400 at Michigan. Rick was qualifying for the race and unfortunately, Rick Baldwin would crash during his run. This accident has left Californian Rick Baldwin unconscious and in critical condition in a Jackson, Michigan hospital. Rick has no broken bones, but serious head injuries. And normally in these cases, the extent cannot be determined until the swelling subsides. During his qualifying run, Rick Baldwin broke loose and spun into the first corner, pancaked the wall on the driver's side, and slid down. Rick was unconscious after the impact from hitting the wall on the driver's side. Some people believed, even his wife Debbie, claimed that the window nets failed, but there was no view to claim that proof. Although Rick Baldwin's chances of survival are 1%, he made it through the first few days. Unfortunately for the Baldwin family, it was going to be a long journey. Two weeks after the accident, Rick Baldwin was transferred to a nursing home in San Antonio, Texas. Rick's wife Debbie and her two children moved into an apartment close by. In early 1988, Rick Baldwin was occasionally opening his eyes, thankfully with no life support machine and systems. Since moving to San Antonio, Texas, Debbie mentioned to Daytona Beach Sunday News Journal that she did not contact any NASCAR officials. However, drivers and crew members frequently get letters and called. NASCAR had a $50,000 insurance policy for all drivers, and this has been fully spent around the same time as Baldwin's move to San Antonio. In 1990, Debbie Baldwin filed a lawsuit against NASCAR, maintaining that the window nets did not do its job from the impact and bulge. However, NASCAR insisted that Rick struck his head on a roll bar. In 1992, a jury found no evidence of a defective window net. It ruled in the favor of NASCAR, which cleared Rick Baldwin and NASCAR from any fault. Debbie later stated that she was reluctant to press the suit, but had done so at the request of Rick's father, Jim. Years have gone by. It became apparent that Rick Baldwin would not be awakened, an offer made to not feed Baldwin. It was made by Texas law, but Rick Baldwin's parents refused. 
However, his parents requested Debbie to divorce Rick from having financial issues, but it was declined. On the bright side, Rick and Debbie's children made it to high school. Eleven years after the Michigan crash, Rick Baldwin would unfortunately lose his life. Two days after his 42nd birthday, NASCAR's life insurance contained a $15,000 payout to the families of a fallen driver. But NASCAR declined to pay, insisting that for that payout to be made, a driver must die less than 90 days after the, the accident. After a short time, however, they agreed to pay Debbie $15,000 for a decrease or loss of limb function, which went towards the funeral. By the time the 21st century arrived, the motorsports world required Hans device or a Hutchins device. Rick Baldwin was a second-generation roofer and race car driver of the Baldwin family from Texas who lived out his dreams until a freak accident took place and was fighting for his life for 11 years. He reached his goals and dreams of racing in NASCAR. Despite having 11 starts in four DNQs in the Winston Cup Series, his best finish was a 12th place in the 1982 National 500, which was in his second start of his Cup Series career. Rick Baldwin was survived by his wife, Debbie, married since 1977, and two daughters named Tiffany and Jennifer. He was also survived by his mother and father. He was 42 years old. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Racing Stories. If there are any more information I missed or got wrong about Rick Baldwin, or if there's any stories you got about him, please feel free to comment down below. I do love seeing old school stories in the comments, and it would mean so much to me to see those. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. This is Ian, signing off. Goodbye, everybody.